Welcome to another video about Paradise. Welcome to the last part of the Croatia series. If you have missed out on the other videos, I'm going to link the playlist at the end of this video so you can check those out afterwards and see what we were up to. Until then, we are going to conclude tips, tricks, experiences of the nine days that we spent in Croatia and the 1,500 kilometers we drove. And now, without further ado, let's go. First thing I wanted to talk about today is traffic, transportation in general. I really liked the decision we did on the rental car because it made us so independent. We were able to see so many different parts of the country and they are ever changing. So it is quite nice to be able to see all those different parts and cities and also uh, go inside the country and explore Plitvice lakes, for example, and also go to the, the peninsula of Istria. It was totally worth it. And judged by the 1,500 kilometers we did, we obviously really, really enjoyed driving and having this road trip. So if you are not coming into the country with your own car, I would really recommend get a rental car. We got it at the airport in Sadar and that was quite handy as well because when we flew back, we were able to just drop it there and fly back. In this category, I also wanted to tell you something about the toll roads. There are quite some toll roads uh, in Croatia. You could avoid them if you wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend that necessarily because they are not too expensive and they're quite chilled to drive. And also sometimes you get some really nice views there as well. In some parts uh, we skip them because we chose to drive along the coastline and there were no tall roads and also some scenic roads. So that is a decision you can do as well. But for the longer rides, we always decided to take the toll road and keep it short. Another common topic that falls in this category as well is the drive to Dubrovnik. Because you might be told that you have to cross the border to Bosnia to get to Dubrovnik and that is going to cost some money. I can't really remember how much, but you can totally avoid that. There is a bridge um, going over to Dubrovnik, you can take that. And also I heard that you could also go through Bosnia without paying extra, but I'm not really sure about that. But by taking your, the bridge, you will be totally fine. So don't uh, listen to them and pay extra money for that because you can do that. You could decide to go through Bosnia if, if you want to check that off of your bucket list, but you don't necessarily have to. Another means of transportation are boats and there are quite a lot of options. You can either do day trips like we did, um, you can rent private boats, we did that as well on one day, um, but also you can do the whole coastline by boat and book multi-day trips with a boat and I think that is quite a cool option as well. We try to pack as much as we could in those couple of days that we had so we didn't spend too much time on the water but on the roads but I guess boats is quite a nice option if you prefer being on the water or if you have more time on your hands. The next topic I want to talk about is food and if you have watched the last video, the previous video, then you already know that we cooked mainly for ourselves and only went out for dinner twice. And that was A for the prices because we tried to save some money by cooking for ourselves. And the second reason is that uh, we are on a vegan diet and that is somewhat difficult in some places. So we preferred to cook for ourselves. But I heard a lot of good things about Croatian food. There's a lot of seafood as there is a whole bunch of coastline and um, you can get quite European prices. So it's not too hefty, but it's not cheap either. So yeah, you have to decide which way you want to go. 
Next point, like always, is accommodation. And like always, we mainly stayed in Airbnbs because we kind of prefer that, but you can expect to pay about 100 euros per night and get quite a nice room or apartment in most parts. And people are really friendly, so they're really hospitable, um, but that's going to be the next point. And I was just blown away. There actually were two stories. If you haven't seen the videos, I'm going to sum those stories up. First story was in Split, where we wanted to do a day tour and we ran out of money. If you want to know why, check out the Dubrovnik video because I'm going to tell you over there. In the end, the girl working at the desk at the tour company paid for our trip in advance believing and trusting in us to give her the money back on Monday and we tried to transfer the money online which was kind of a struggle because it was into another country with another currency. That was kind of a struggle but it worked out in the end but I was totally blown away that she just trusted in us to pay her back and that she would yeah, pay for us. That was really really impressive. The second story is about those two guys helping me rescuing, saving my drone, which was hovering above water. And they already closed their shop and enjoying their evening, but just hopped in and helped me out by getting a kayak and dragging that into the water. Then I paddled out, saved the drone, came back. They got the kayak back up to the beach and they refused to take any money from me. And even when I insisted to give them at least a tip, they refused. So in the end, I went to the car, got some money, went back, took the money, shoved it under the towel and then said, have a nice evening. Thank you so much for your help. You really rescued my drone. You saved it. It would have drowned without you. Thank you so much. You are the most friendliest people I ever met. Have a good night. Bye bye. And I ran off, so they had to take my money. But I think they would have refused it otherwise. So that's hospitality at its finest. And I was so overwhelmed by it. So I can really, really recommend to get in touch with the locals because they're such nice people. On the other hand, there are quite a lot of tourists, especially when you get into Plitschwitz Lakes, when you get into Dubrovnik, those places are packed. Even Krka, which is not as big as Plitvice Lakes, that's still really, really flooded with people. Expect long lines of people waiting and stay in line for different activities. That's how it is in beautiful countries. Our host at Plitvice Lakes actually said um, that you should go a little later, maybe and September to October uh, and then it's going to be a little less crowded and you might be able to enjoy some places a little quieter. Another very important part is beaches and activities. I only found out when we were there that most of the beaches are like pebbly stone beaches so be aware of that and maybe put some uh, water shoes into your luggage you have to do Krka, you have to do Plitvice Lakes if you're there and you don't want to miss out on that. And also there are the old towns and castles. And for me, it got even more impressive in those parts where they shot Game of Thrones. It absolutely feels like you're in the movie when you walk through Duborovnik, also known as King's Landing it really feels like being on set and I really really liked it. If you watch Game of Thrones I can highly recommend it. In those places you can also do special Game of Thrones tours. We didn't do that but I think that might be fun as well. If you are into hiking Croatia doesn't come short of different options. You can do longer or different lengths of hikes in the national parks but you can also go into the Villebit um, which is a mountain range and national park as well and you can do quite difficult uh, hikes in there so 
Yeah, I think it's for everyone because you can e do easy hikes or you can do really difficult ones. So if you like it, Croatia is a good option for you as well. For the weather, it always depends on the season you go. We went end of August and the weather, weather was really, really nice, quite warm. But when we got more into the country at the Plitvice Lakes, it rained, it was quite foggy and it was way colder than on the coastline. So be prepared for that and always check the weather forecast. The next part is snorkeling and diving. I didn't do a dive this time. I think there are some shipwrecks you could dive in, but I didn't expect too much from Croatia on that part. On snorkeling, we did some short snorkeling stops when we were swimming anyways. And I think especially like Blue Lagoon or the, the secret cave with the wreck, the water is really, really clear. So that is really cool to see. And if you haven't explored snorkeling as a hobby too much already, then I would really recommend to try it in Croatia because of the clear water. It's a lot of fun. Last chapter of this video is going to be the money. If you want to know how much you can expect to pay, check out the previous video because I summed that up there already. But I want to talk about the Kuna, which is the creation money, but that's going to change soon. There's going to be a switch to the Euro, so that makes it kind of easier for, for everyone coming from European countries because you don't have to exchange money but also prices are going to get a little up. They already do so I think they are already getting to a price range quite close to the whole European price range so I think over the last year or two they already um, reached a price that is comparable to the other countries. And that's it for the Croatia series already. And if I have missed anything, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer all your questions and maybe implicate those questions in the next how-to videos. And now I'm going to head off to another secret country. And after that, there's going to be a big trip. Maybe have a guess down below in the comments where it's going to and then i see you over there for that maybe try to check this subscribe button out right now because only 10 percent of you are subscribed already so you should do that right now somewhere over there there is the croatia's playlist see you over there until then click the like button enjoy thank you very much bye bye